Morning, everybody. Thank you so much for, uh, for joining our, uh, our panel on progressive web apps. I am so excited uh, to be here with these experts on PWA, people doing real work in PWA. And so um, this is a technology track, though. And so we're going to try to keep it, uh, keep it fact-based. And so with PWA, assuming everybody is you know, completely familiar with it, there's, there's, a, lot of, you know, there, there's a lot of hype. Uh, there's a lot of enthusiasm. And sometimes it's hard to kind of sift through that. And so that's where the audience here, I think, is going to help us out with, uh, with what we're doing here. And so for those who aren't familiar, uh, one of the very first apps uh, as a PWA was called Air Horner. It was built, built by Paul Kinlan uh, when tw uh, in 2015, around the time of PWA being defined. And so I'd encourage you all to download Air Horner right now, uh, so Air Horn ER. And what was, what's going to happen is if we start to get a little bit too marketing, we want you to call us out. And we want you to, uh, you want us to give, us a, give us a horn uh, for that one. So everybody here has it. And, so keep us honest uh, as, as an audience here throughout this. We encourage you to do so. Again, this is a technology track. We're assuming everybody knows why, uh, why that's important. Uh, but if we get a little bit too marketing, um, let us know, OK? So, uh, so with that in mind, uh, I'd like the, uh, the panel to introduce themselves. So, I'm James Edlin, front end architect, Magento Adobe, PWA Studio, hashtag those things. <laughs> uh, I'm Damian Ransuli. I work at Google. I'm a mobile solutions engineer. I'm Filip Rakowski, I'm a co-founder of Vistor front and architect there. And uh, my name is uh, Jesse Rijtsma from the Netherlands, uh, own a little company, and I'm training people to use React and Vue. Very good. How are we doing? Someone is about to play the Star Spangled Banner. All right. All right, there we go. Um, so let's talk a little bit about uh, some of the activities that have happened this week uh, around PWA. Again, as a, de as a developer, as a merchant, and also as a, as a partner as well. And so, yes, I'd like to start with you. Uh, I was really inspired by your talk yesterday with regard to, uh, uh, to really the experimentation and, and really kind of getting beyond is it ready and really to start, start playing with things. Can you tell us a little bit more about that for those who weren't here? And I'd like to get some, some uh, points of view from the, from the panel as well. Yeah, so uh, my, my talk yesterday was about um, um, that a lot of people are waiting for PWA to reach a certain stability or something, uh, waiting it for, for it to be ready. And often they look in the direction of uh, Magento uh, for, for PWA Studio to be more mature. Um, but my talk was basically wondering, uh, or through my talk I was wondering, like what kind of stability do you expect it to have? Um, so my, my personal approach was basically that I'm, I'm saying uh, that a lot of developers can already start uh, adopting technology like Vue and React um, instead of just relying on PWA Studio to be 100% complete. Um, in, in that path, basically, it's not only the system integrators that sh should start playing with things, uh, but especially basically the extension vendors uh, as well. Uh, because the extensions are still lacking uh, big time in the support for PWA because they're still waiting for something magical to happen. And the, the, the main point I wanted to make was basically that it's, it's easy to start with GraphQL, so the server side of uh, PWA technology. Uh, it's easy to start with React and Vue. Um, and that's basically the responsibility of a lot of developers to pick, uh, pick up on. Yeah, I really, really appreciated that message. I sat down there, I was, I was biting my fingernail. You were crying. I thought you were going to get <laughs> so mad at me. But it was a very supportive message, and I appreciated that. I, I think, too, um, seeing the example of Vue Storefront uh, gaining so much momentum uh, and being willing to implement features and to put together a lot of API surface has, has taught us, as the PWA Studio maintainers and directors of its uh, growing API, that maybe we're going too horizontal. Maybe we are um, building the API and the, the platform on it too slowly. And our intention you know, was that we don't want people to, uh, to look at the platform advancing too far too fast and say, there's too much risk there. Mm -hmm. The APIs that are there are going to change too quickly, and my work's going to get thrown away. Let's wait till the platform's stable before stepping on it. Um, but you know, I guess we thought PWA Studio is a young product. You don't you know, determine how someone's life is going to go by how they spent their 20s, I hope. Uh, and it seems as though those things are necessary to learn what the product is. So it's, it's very clear to us now that uh, our idea of, well, you can just build this as a generic website. Windows just have make a website. Now Magento's API can power any website. So uh, let's not get too prescriptive. Let's learn. That, I don't think that respected the, the people out here who are consuming this platform, donating us their feedback and time. They have limited time. 
And so you need to give them some guardrails in order to get started. It's your job to say, hey, get on the road, start. And it's our job to try, to try and make that, uh, to reduce the risk of that so that the people out here who, who have a lot to do can do it. Yeah, but on the other hand, uh, so the, the, the thing what we can do, um, me as a trainer, you guys as, as building a perfect solution as well for the Magento developers, is basically that, that there's another side, and that's basically the rest of the, the whole ecosystem that needs to be starting to play with PWA as well, because the technology is already there, and actually a lot of uh, the different, different companies are already proving that they can build a PWA with the existing uh, technology. Right. Um, so that, that's basically also up to the, to the people listening in, uh, you know, it's, it's there, so you can start playing uh, with it. Yeah, and what you make, you know, we're, we're, uh, we'll continue to develop as, you know, generic and powerful of primitives as possible so that you can fit that stuff into our system. But we now know, too, that, you know, maybe, maybe draw some lines on the road. <laughs> yeah, also in our case, uh, actually everyone that are building shops on Vsurf and they're aware that this is not perfect solution, but the demand for PWA is so huge that they're trying anyway. Yeah. And the good news is that both solutions are open source, so it's very easy like to check the code to see actually how it works, if you will find bugs, because obviously we find some bugs, you can easily fix them. So also, I think open source is, is, is a really good thing in, in this matter. We, are, we feel good that that's how we started too. Um, we want to make this an open toolkit. And because we're building a lot of things slow, a, a lot of these tools that we're excited for, even folks like you, Storefront, to pull into your, your build systems, they don't have that maturity. I think mm -hmm. once we get there, I think it'll, be, it'll be clear how much developing it as open source has helped. Yeah, I think the most thing here is just to be honest with people, like saying, hey, this is the tool, this is not perfect, but it's just getting things done. There, there can be some bugs, but you can fix them. And we're completely honest with, with, uh, with our partners, and it turns out it's, it's working. Yeah, yeah, and it looks good. Great, and so yeah, I mean, I, I'm continue to be inspired with the experimentation that we see. It's very clear when you when you talk to you know talk to a merchant or partner that have actually started to take a look at what we've got, right? And so again, kind of getting beyond the the initial, uh, you know, kind of the, the initial glossy brochure of kind of the promise of PDBA and actually understanding and you know and really allowing for some hours on their development side to, to start playing around with it. It's really clear when that happens, and you know we talk to a handful of customers and partners per week about that, so that's great. So, um, so let's let's switch gears a little bit. Uh, and so, uh, so I want to I get uh, Demian's perspective from a from a Google standpoint. So, we've been collaborating with the Google team for at this point over two years, and so working really closely with Rowan Mirwood, Mirwood and uh, and several others, and, and really encouraged about that uh, that relationship. Can you tell us a little bit more about uh, what's happening there? You know, kind of what uh, what the latest is on Progressive from an SEO standpoint, maybe even a tooling standpoint. Yeah, that's a good question. So. From an SEO uh, perspective, I think the biggest announcement was that the crawler is now going to run the latest version yep. of Chrome, which I think that's, <laughs> that's important. That air, was is announced. there an air horn? Wait, no. Um, no, not that. Uh, very recently, but I think that's very good. Yeah, that's something that had yeah. to happen. Uh, from the tooling perspective, uh, we were talking a lot about Lighthouse lately. This is a tool that's going to continue evolving and now has like much more information for you to know if you are doing things that we consider are right or not. Um, and then there are a lot of like uh, interesting things happening in the platform itself, which could be like uh, new APIs, uh, and even something that I'm personally very excited about is Trusted Web Activities, which is you used to have a PWA, and your users could install this PWA in the phone. Now you can even like upload this to the store because you right. might have a very good PWA and you don't need to even develop a separate native application. Yep. It's not for everyone, but at least it's something that's something uh, we heard a lot from, from companies. So I think this, these are three different things that are like uh, making a lot of progress to make the web and the PWA experience much better. Absolutely. We talk a lot to, uh, to partners and merchants on what distribution looks like, right? And so, you know, it's very quick, uh, you know, people ask, well, what about SSR? What about these other things? But if you follow along, the Googlebot announcement was huge. And, and then also mobile page performance uh, last summer when that was announced being a ranking factor, that was huge as well. And so continuing to follow along with that, what that looks like, you know, your distribution model and really your, uh, your, your acquisition model is going to be quite different, uh, you know, and, and so we're, we're pretty encouraged. We're pretty excited about that. And, uh, it's, it, it's been great so far. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, well, I think well, the announcement of speed was very important to put uh, the importance of speed from a user experience point of view 
in the context of search as well. Mm -hmm. It's one more signal, it's not the only one. So right. it's not that you're going to necessarily uh, have the worst ranking if you slow down, but it's going to be considered as an important one. So we need to pay attention. And it's not a single metric or a single tool. So what we say usually is to try to take performance as a whole. Because if you focus too much, let's suppose you focus too much on speed index or first contact full paint, you, mm -hmm. are, you forget about time to interactive, which is part of user experience as well. Yep. So performance is a group of things, not a single metric, right? Uh, I, I think that's very important, and it's a good progress towards that direction. Yeah. Yep. I think we can all predict pretty safely that uh, Googlebot and the other search engines, which there are, by the way, mm -hmm. if you guys know, uh, <laughs> that they'll all end up using fairly modern mm -hmm. renderers as well. So mm -hmm. doing server-side render for that use case mm -hmm. seems less important. But there are other cases, which are very important in commerce, where you, you know that something is going to scrape this page without fully rendering it, like the the linker bots from social networks, Facebook and Twitter and Slack, that build media objects that are very important for sharing of, of commerce objects, mm -hmm. the, the products, et cetera. So what, it, what is the current state of recommendations and best practices for doing server-side render where necessary and appropriate for those uh, channels? So actually, I don't have a lot of input on how this is going to be uh, crawled, or what is the interpretation that the crawler is going to have? This is something that we don't really talk about. Uh, but from an architectural point of view, usually, and from a user standpoint, uh, seems like the best approach would be to have a mix of server-side rendering plus some client-side rendering. Uh, so usually you want to show to the users your page very fast. And if they want to continue navigating, then you can migrate to more like a client-side rendering approach. Uh, so I don't know if that more or less answers the question, but I think it's more about thinking of how different platforms are going to treat these things. Thinking about how the user is going to perceive that right. is usually a good way of doing things right. Uh, we usually say, like, focus on the user, and the rest will, will follow afterwards. Uh, so yeah, I think that's probably the best advice we can give in that front. That's, yeah. that's yep. good advice. I, yeah. Yeah. There's a trade-off. And when you're doing software architecture, you look at a trade-off and you see it as a challenge. Like, that shouldn't be a trade-off. Yeah. But here, it's, it's one we haven't cracked yet. You have to do some work on the server side. And you know, folks in smaller stores can do things like Gatsby and, and projects that you guys have worked on where you just pre-render the entire catalog. Mm -hmm. But Magento stores have like 14 million SKUs. So we got some trade-off in the middle where you, the, some of that server-side rendering will be necessary necessarily slow that we're trying to figure out. Mm -hmm. Fix it for me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's a good feedback, by the way. That's yeah. it. No, it's, I think the experience part's really important. Again, it sounds a little bit cliche. I would expect an air horn or two uh, as, as a, result, a result of that. But that makes things easier. Ultimately, if we're looking at it and building this in the way of how we would expect to see this as a user, we don't have to worry about these alternate views or alternate experiences along the way. And so I think one of my, uh, I think one of my highlights this week was actually uh, uh, Philip's presentation, some of the things that were happening at uh, at Meet uh, PWA, where you know traditionally, when you when you when you listen to you know someone from a from a technical background, an architect, um, you know you expect it to kind of go one way. But he spends a lot of time talking through the potential of experiences that are happening across uh, across the field, and, and and really the fact that we're only scratching the surface on what that looks like. And so, Philip, can you tell us a little bit about what excites you, and, so, and maybe some of the some of the highlights from an experience standpoint uh, that you shared with us earlier this week for those who weren't here? Oh, that's a lot of this. Yeah, where do you start? <laughs> uh, so the, the, the few things I wanted to highlight during PWA are, uh, first of all, like the performance is also about trade-offs. And uh, actually, we are focusing on performance a lot right now. We are focusing on Lighthouse score a lot. Uh, but to be honest, Lighthouse score is like not the most important met metrics, because the most important, important metrics is actually how users are perceiving our application. So we need to think a lot about user experience. We need to. We need to think about how actually users are interacting with our application right now, because we're interacting usually with one thumb. So uh, we actually can't transfer desktop experience to the mobile experience. We can do like simple responsive web design. We need to go a little bit further. Uh, sometimes we need to merge pages, for example. And also, it's really important to think how people actually are perceiving our application. So there was a really nice, uh, really nice uh, image I showed. Uh, 
I was showing that actually one second is enough for people to the mental context switch on your website, so it's very important to keep like every action below at least this one second and usually below uh, 100 milliseconds. Yeah. And no. Those are probably the most important highlights. Absolutely. Yeah. There was a lot in there. That was a good summary. Yeah, it's, it's amazing how much performance is part of that, right? I think, you know, in longer versions of this, we talk about all the, you know, all, all the, uh, you know, restrictions that would happen in a typical situation where, you know, we can't assume everybody has five bars of connectivity. We can't assume uh, everyone, everybody has a, you know, a $1,000 iPhone in their pocket. And, you know, I think Google does a nice job, I think, evangelizing and building empathy for developers when they create this, uh, you know, th this mindset. But it really does depend. And I think, you know, it's an extraordinary challenge, I think, to think through all of those. But I think... You know, I think my I think my t key takeaway I would I would encourage everyone here and, and everyone back home to, to think about is, is is really we need to act and think together as a as a single group as we look at these together and so as you know the hundreds of thousands of you know of uh, Magento developers that are out there let's think through and actually contribute towards that whether it's you know understanding these experiences but also like let's you know even a couple days ago I uh, I submitted a request to the WebKit team like hey when's the push notifications coming together so that's <laughs> so it's like you know one voice is one thing but the voice of hundreds of thousands hey let's listen this is a big problem for us and we, we want that we want to see this on the roadmap we'd like to see this as an experimental feature in you know in, in iOS you know 14 or next version of WebKit like that that's the big takeaway I think for me I just realized they're gonna tell us that on our iPhones with a push notification yes it's it's here it's true sorry <laughs> they know. Um, well, good. So let's uh, let's let's. Uh, I think we're, we're we're starting to run short on time. I, I haven't gotten the, uh, the the signal yet from uh, from Shannon. So I, I kind of talked. I talked through my. Um, I talked a little bit through my my kind of final thoughts or my key takeaways. But I want to kind of go down the road here and kind of talk about like what is the one thing you want everybody to uh, to think about when it comes to to P 2 B A. Maybe something unique or some you know one piece that you want everybody to remember. Stop, Last words. Stop waiting, start playing is a great message. Remember that we're also moving towards you, trying to uh, help you start playing easier. It's I think if, if I would say one thing, uh, as I said before, focus on user experience, not on the numbers. <laughs> so actually, PWAs are all, all about user experience. All those technologies that we are using are actually about, uh, about user experience, so focus on this part. Yeah, and so my, my main point was indeed like uh, st stop complaining or, um, or waiting, but just to start playing with it. But it's also because the technology stack is new, so there's a lot of uh, experimenting still going on. There's a lot of things that, that you need to learn, but learning takes time. So if you're, if you're going to postpone the learning process again with a couple of years, then maybe you're too late. So basically the learning process is always something you start, in, uh, start with in advance then to benefit when things really get, get real. Yeah, but you don't need to learn anything at the beginning. Actually, you can progressively add new features. You can actually start with, I'd say, being headless and add some other, uh, some other technology. It's because progressive web apps, it's not a framework. Progressive web applications are not the framework. It's a set of technologies that are meant to improve user experience. So you can start small, then add on top of this another, another, another improvement. So at the end, you will have something that behaves like native applications, but you can Start just by optimizing your performance, by optimizing a little bit your designs, adjusting them to the mobile users. So I'd say you can start even now. You don't need to benefit from all of those. Uh, and build on top of that. Uh, one thought that I have is that PWA can be many things. So we used to say that it's like an umbrella term for a set mm -hmm. of APIs and things. But still at the heart of a good experience is traditional web performance. Even before you go to the service worker and all these magic things that you can do, if you are not doing things right, even without the service worker, it's not that having a service worker is going to change your life, right? So, and if you go to, for example, right now to Lighthouse and it shows you all the checks that you need to pass, one of them is your site is fast enough on 3G, for example, right? Mm -hmm. And it's the one that every time we talk to companies, we see them failing that one. It's in red. Why? Because traditional web performance sometimes is, is so hard to do, uh, but it's still like at the heart of a PWA. Uh, and on top of that, you have a lot of things. You can add to home screen, you can send push notifications, you have offline caching, all these things, right? But web performance, traditionally speaking, that's a very important thing still, yeah? Agreed. So great stuff. So again, I think in the spirit of really wanting to get some questions from the audience here, I have a few of my own. Um, I, you know, again, want to thank the, uh, the panelists here. Uh, I've got Yissa. 
Uh, we got Philip, uh, Demi, and of course James as well. And so uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, for this, I know it's short, but again, want to uh, want to turn things over to the audience. So what kind of questions do we have? All right, we've got an abundance of genius on this stage. Who wants to ask the first question? Don't be shy. I don't think any of them there has, there has to be questions. Oh. If this is your question, yes, in my photo I was wearing the same suit as I am now. <laughs> yeah. um, so I just wanted to ask about notifications. So, um, A little uh, higher up. Sorry. Uh, I wanted to ask about notifications. So uh, if, without using push notifications, if, if we could leverage HTML5 notifications. Similar Sorry, to you're kind of tough to hear if you wouldn't mind. Uh, uh, OK, better. Um, Sorry. If I was asking about notifications. So without using push, if we could leverage HTML5 notifications, similar how uh, you, know, you could see that on the desktop. Um, with, with Apple Pay, for example, I've triggered notifications on iOS a few times. Um, you know, is there any workarounds like that that we could use? HTML5 notifications on the desktop seem to fulfill a lot of the promise of push. And so uh, what's the strategy there? So uh, not really sure about, uh, because notifications is something that you can actually show without even receiving a push event. So these are two different things. You have the push event and you have the notification, right? right. So uh, what's not really available in mobile at the moment in all the platforms is receiving the push event. <laughs> Uh, but you can still show notifications, and in desktop you can do exactly the same thing. Uh, so the problem is in some platforms like iOS, how are you going to send these notifications to user? And the answer today is you can't, and there are no signals that that's going to happen, at least from, from uh, iOS or Apple yet. Uh, the other thing is that if you do show notifications in Chrome for mobile, Try to show and ask the permission respectfully for the be respectful for the user, because I'm seeing a lot of sites that they are like prompting the user to accept the notification permission, and that's going to make the web even worse. So uh, notifications can be great. We have seen great improvements, especially in e-commerce, for things like I don't know, seller replies to a question and you can come back through a web push, and they have like a very important impact on transactions. But then being used really, really badly. So trying to show the permission at the right time, I think is one of the best things. I don't have any updates regarding the, the lack of support in, in some platforms. They haven't shown any signals yet. Uh, I also think that question uh, might, you might be able to answer it yourself thinking about the type of notifications right. that you want to push. I mean, sure, the UI is similar and the capability on the desktop is similar, but you push a notification when something remote happens, like a shipment or whatever, right. but, but on the mobile device, you also want to be uh, paying attention to the, the flow of data from the device. Geofenced notifications, notifications you hold the phone up or when you're in a retail locale or you take a picture that uh, has something it recognizes. And so the technology with which you push the notification is not certainly as important as the use case. Uh, so right now it's important in iOS because we're missing a technology that a lot of use cases would need. So yep. think about the use case first, um, and notifications are like, uh, they're like a perfume. A little goes a long way. You want to <laughs> spray the notification in front of you and just walk through. <laughs> right, and if, and if it's a hard requirement, you know, we encourage others to take a look at uh, the solutions like PhoneGap and Cordova. Uh, it does mean you have to go in the App Store for that, but you can wrap the PWA when that, yeah. if that is a hard requirement. Um, it's not perfect, but, uh, but it certainly gets you there. Yeah, also you can fall back, for example, you can fall back to email if you can, if you can mm -hmm. actually send push notifications. Usually, if you have any email agent on your phone, you will, get re you will receive push notification about this email, so it works similarly. So you can do a lot of hacking in this area. Those aren't branded. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good point. Emails are already yep. most of what you need. All right, I think we have time for at least one more question, right? Or a couple. Who else has one? Any questions for our group? All right. All right. I've got a question. What's coming up for PWA Studio? Very shortly, uh, depending, on, <laughs> depending on whether I get a push notification on my phone indicating right. this, uh, we are going to come out with four. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to, you should have done it again. We are, we are going to come out with 4.0.0 alpha. Uh, and this is the first step towards a release candidate. We've, 
moving pretty s sort of reasonably slow compared to other libraries, fast compared to Magento Core. Um, and that's going to contain a few very interesting improvements to the, the base of any application and additional tooling. Uh, my favorite, certainly, is that we have uh, reduced the amount of boilerplate that's in the Venia app specifically. So if you want to use the Venia app as a starting point, you are not taking ownership of as much code. There's more API surface for you to connect different packages together, for you to use dependencies and merge them into your code. That is using the extension paradigms that already exist in the ecosystem outside of Magento. Um, but maybe my favorite is that uh, uh, one of our new developers contributed a, a static rendering system for most use cases that uh, quadruples our performance on the first load. Um, we, uh, we're probably going to be able to get that out this month. I think we, we're targeting the middle of the month. And then when an alpha is out, it's not going to override your dependency, so don't worry. But you can choose to, to pull it in uh, once it's published. Perfect. Thank you. Excellent. What's new for Vue Storefront? Yeah. Oh, there's plenty of new things because we're working in many streams. Actually, yep. uh, currently, what we are trying to do is to make the storefront kind of layered and modularized. So you have data resolving layer, then you have business logic layer, then you have UI layer. And on top of that, you have modules where every module is kind of a small application. So we have module for cart, you have module for catalog, you have module for CMS. If you don't like, for example, uh, WordPress as CMS, you can just Prismic as CMS. You're just detaching this module and the other module. And this is what we are currently working on to, this is the direction we are currently working on. I think we will be able to, to finish this at, say, on January, February, something like this. Uh, and this is actually what excites me most because all of those layers are actually extension points. So we can choose actually what we want and replace the parts that we don't want. Uh, yeah. That's great. Fantastic. One more big round of applause for our expert panel. Appreciate you guys. Good stuff.